Hey YouTube, Drawboy here. So, today I want to talk about Wano. Maybe we could call this the history of Wano? I don't know guys, this is going to be a video that's going to be talking about and discussing a lot of different things. Uh, and it may not be the most organized video ever, but I think that a discussion about Wano is warranted because, straight up guys, Wano could begin as soon as next chapter, um, or 10 chapters from now, we're really not sure. But as we're getting into the thick of the reverie, JB's already moved on to Wano. But we might as well start a disorganized video in a disorganized way and just start talking. The oldest thing that we know about Wano is the Kozuki clan. The Kozuki clan, obviously from Wano, were the creators of the Pwn Glyphs. This is a question that occurs to me from time to time, and I don't really see a lot of people talking about it, although it is definitely a question I think we should be asking, is was Wano at any point in time allies with the Ancient Kingdom? Obviously the Kozuki clan were some kind of allies with the Ancient Kingdom because they helped create the Poneglyphs which, you know, share their history. I believe that it is an interesting question to ask whether or not the Kozuki clan from Wano were allies with the Ancient Kingdom or the entire country. On one hand, we have speculated in the past that the Ancient Kingdom is a kingdom of pirates. Uh, and it's really interesting when you look at the Kozuki clan, specifically the Kozuki clan emblem, which they tattoo on their subordinates. That's a practice which is most common in the world of One Piece for pirates, not for royalty. And even looking at the emblem itself, all you really need is a skull, and it's a straight up Jolly Roger. It has uh, what appears to be the crossed bones. And so we know that Wano today is uh, an isolationist country. Nobody comes in, supposedly, and nobody leaves, or they're not supposed to. But we don't know if it has always been this way. I think that we'd have to assume that it has not always been this way, but uh, at this point in time, that's something that needs to be touched on. But we have this curiosity of the long-standing relationship between the Kozuki clan and the Minks. I think that it is really intriguing that this relationship is between the Minks and the Kozuki clan specifically, and not the entire country of Wano. I'm personally assuming, and I think that this is a safe assumption, that the Minks are not from Wano, meaning that the relationship fostered between the Kozuki clan and the Minks had to have been fostered by actual contact between the two groups, which suggests that either Wano Kuni has not always been isolationist, or the Kozuki clan has always pushed the rules. So going back to the idea that the Kozuki clan in the past, in the Void Century, were pirates or explorers of some kind, who happened to meet the Minx as well as other people including the Ancient Kingdom and fostered some kind of bond in that way. That makes sense to me. But on the other hand, there's speculation and there's thoughts out there that you know, what has been the Kozuki's role in Wano since the Void Century? Currently, they are not the royal family. We're not led to believe that they are the absolute royal family of Wano, but it's possible in the past they were. And that would sort of lend to the idea that during the Void Century, Wano was a member of or an ally of the Ancient Kingdom. And also begs the question of how the Kozuki clan were dethroned. But I think that it's at this point in time that I need to discuss what I believe to be a common misconception about the Kozuki. Uh, Odin Kozuki is a daimyo. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. If you know how to pronounce it, let me know in the comments section. But essentially, a daimyo is like a lord, and I believe that it literally translates into something along the lines of great landowner. In the actual history of Japan, the daimyos were the direct subordinates of the shogun and I believe that they were selected by the Shogun. I believe that a daimyo is kind of a fluid uh, title. It, like, it can be given to those of royal blood, of royalty themselves, or given to those that uh, the Shogun deems worthy, whether they be great warriors, samurai, or you know whoever. The key is, is that they are loyal to the Shogun, and they are great landowners. Odin Kozuki as a daimyo is one of many various lords, who we can presume sort of control various areas of, of Wano Kuni. We do not really know about the distant past or the Kozuki's family lineage itself, but straight up Odin in recent times, or the Kozuki in recent times, are really not that special in Wano. I mean, they are special, but they're not the, the, the cream of the crop. They're not the top of the top. The very most powerful person in Wano should be the Shogun, 
and maybe to a lesser extent, and I think that this is overlooked by a lot of the fan base, would be the actual Emperor of Wano if such a title actually exists. The Shogun essentially is a military commander, a military ruler of Japan. And in present times and other times in Japanese history, Shogun basically meant general. I don't really want to get into much of these specificities because I am not an expert, but obviously what is uh, the Shogun in, in, of Wano Kuni, the, the person that we are looking forward to, uh, sort of refers to uh, somebody who has seized control over Japan, or in this case Wano, by taking power from the Emperor, the actual ruling family of, of Wano or Japan. So over the course of many centuries in the actual history of Japan, an emperor exists, but they did not have as much power as the shogun. They were basically figureheads, they were ceremonial. So it's quite possible that a character who has not even been teased, but might end up becoming relevant or present in Wano, is the emperor of Wano. The direct descendant of the traditional royal family. But sort of the point that I'm getting to here, and I think the clarification that's necessary is um, I really do not believe that the Kozuki family, Oden Kozuki and Momonosuke, um, are more than just lords. But let's take this back to their title, or Odin's title of Daimyo. As I said earlier, traditionally, a Daimyo was a person that was selected by the Shogun and allowed to retain their territory by the person who is actually ruling the country. It's kind of interesting to think about him in this light, and then think about how it does not make sense, the actions of the, sh the Shoka. In some way or another, the Kozuki family and the Shogun had a falling out. And the Shogun specifically wanted them killed because he seems to have entered into an alliance with Kaido, and that was Kaido's objective. Or the Shogun's objective. Odin was killed, as the story suggested he was turned into a soup boiled alive but this is sort of a face value look at this this could end, this could end up being really complicated in fact uh there could be a lot of politics involved with wano that we may or may not get but certainly could have played a role in what has occurred with the kozuki family for instance if the kozuki family as a daimyos as a great landowner could have been so powerful that it would have been dangerous for the shogun to attempt to assassinate them because it could lead to some sort of great war within Wano, Civil War, whatever you want to call it. This is something that makes a lot of sense to me because we know that Odin left Wano at some point in the past to become a pirate, to sail on both the ships of Whitebeard and Goldie Roger. Knowing that Wano is isolationist, we still don't know exactly when they became that way, but I think that we can presume it has been that way for a while. Then Odin's actions would have been illegal and frowned upon by the rulers of Wano. Yet Odin seemed to have retained his title for many years after having left Wano. It sort of paints this picture of a vagabond daimyo, somebody who can essentially do whatever he likes uh, and not face repercussions for his actions. In my opinion, this creates an interesting story, an interesting backstory for the Kozuki family, the Kozuki clan themselves. At some point in the distant past, uh, they became daimyos. Given their legacy from dating back to the Void Century, I think that we can assume that they are a very historic and powerful family. But in the more recent past, the current Shogun has wanted to, uh, to out them, to kill them, because they haven't been following the rules. But they couldn't because the Kozuki are too powerful, or they have too many other allies from within Wano. For those of you out there who are well versed in Japanese history, feel free to throw your comments down in the comments section uh, to add sort of your your take on this and how it might relate to actual Japanese history. I uh, maybe throw in other things that I maybe don't understand or don't know. But if you think of of Odin Kozuki, the leader of the Kozuki clan, being a daimyo, being somebody that the shogun has not liked or the shogun's family has not liked for some amount of time then I think that it's really interesting to look at Odin's relationships, the ones that we know. He clearly was friends with the Whitebeard Pirates, as well as the Roger Pirates. Let's say for a moment that Odin returns to Wano, his actions deemed illegal, whether it be at the time or later. And say you want to take out Odin Kozuki, aside from potential allies from within Wano, you potentially could make an enemy out of the Whitebeard Pirates themselves. The Whitebeard Pirates are would, would have been a huge ally. Somebody that the Shogun would undoubtedly have feared. 
I think that it's definitely possible that Odin's connection with the Viper Pirates made him essentially untouchable. And I think that this adds up with another thing that we know. We were led to believe, based on uh, how Jinbei dresses, as well as the hat that Ace made for Oars, he said that he learned how to make it in Wano. Ace obviously being a member of the Whitebeard Pirates. We know that Wano is supposed to be isolationist, yet somehow the Whitebeard Pirates visited Wano, even in the recent past. How do you make sense of that? It really only makes sense as Odin Kozuki and the Kozuki family and the area that they control is kind of immune to the law. They do what they want to do. Screw it to the rules. And that could only add potentially further motivation for the Shogun to want to take them out. The border is supposed to be closed. People are not supposed to be coming in, yet the Whitebeard Pirates are. And Oda Kozuki is allowing it. And potentially even specifically defying the Shogun by suggesting that others do the same. Because we know that it is very important to Odin that the borders be opened. And I think that all of this sort of pieces together nicely with all this, this speculation. We know that two years ago the Wiper Pirates were defeated, they lost their hold in the New World, and it's also possible that Odin Kozuki lost a very valuable ally. Whitebeard's defeat in some small way or large way allowed for the Shogun to enact his revenge on the Kozuki family. But I think that there's some other really interesting things. First off, we know that, that it, or it seems that the Shogun and Kaido have formed some kind of alliance. This could obviously be elaborated on in the future, and it could be very different. It's possible that, that Kaido forced himself upon the Shogun, and the Shogun couldn't really do anything about it, but we're not really given that impression. And I think that's really interesting that uh, with the Whitebeard Pirates essentially being defeated, it required an alliance with Kaido for the Shogun to finally defeat the Kozuki. Which I think lends to the idea that the Kozuki family, aside from the White Bird Pirates, had other allies as well. Other allies from within Wano itself. And I think that this is something that, the, an, an impression that we are getting from the story itself, uh, based on what Kinemon has said, that when they go back to Wano, they sort of have to collect their various allies. When we get into Wano, I would not be surprised if he had convinced and had persuaded many people within Wano that it would be better to open up the borders. And maybe he created a faction that was antagonistic to the Shogun. So again, guys, this is speculation, but I just think that it's really interesting that the Kozuki and their allies potentially could have been so powerful that it required the Shogun to add Kaido as their ally in order to defeat them. And I think that this is also interesting looking at it from another way. Maybe you could say that Kaido has some interest uh, in, in Wano Kuni. But he didn't just seize control of the entire island itself on, on his own. He made an alliance with the Shogun first. Perhaps suggesting that maybe Kaido could not have defeated Wano Kuni if they were completely allied against him. We're sort of led to believe that Wano Kuni is an incredibly powerful nation. An island specifically that the Marines avoid and it's put on the level of the Giants of Elba. So maybe here's some perspective on just how powerful they are as a group. Even Kaido being the absolute monster that he is, being a Yonko of the New World, did not think or maybe did not believe that he could have defeated Wano Kuni by himself. So maybe you have a situation in which both the Shogun and the Kaido saw some sort of advantage in allying together in order to take out the Kozuki family. The Shogun perhaps worried about the Kozuki family's power um, and uh, Kaido wanting an end into Wano. With what might have essentially been a civil war from within Wano itself, the, the current power level of Wano Kuni is at half strength. And this might provide Kaido an opportunity for himself to be able to destroy or rule over or accomplish whatever with Wano that he wants to. I definitely believe that this could be a direction for the story going forward into the future. Kaido himself betraying the Shogun in order to do some sort of major harm against Wano. But then again, looking at the speculations and the absurd amount of possibility that exists within Wano, it's also possible that the Shogun has been, or currently is, or has always been a subordinate of Kaido. A lot of people believe that the Shogun is one of Kaido's calamities. So it's less about betraying the Shogun because they've always had the same objective. 
And in this case, the only thing that really stopped Kaido from ruling over or occupying Wano was the presence of the Whitebeard Pirates, which I've suggested in the past, and I, I personally believe that uh, Wano was within Whitebeard's territory in the New World uh, before he was defeated. But anyway, we could really talk about this and the many various directions the story could go for a, a long time, but I just sort of wanted to discuss my thoughts about sort of the politics that could be involved with what's happened with the Kozuki and Kaido's involvement. All of this is really interesting to me, and I'm sure we're going to get clarification. But another thing that I want to talk about is uh, Odin Kozuki, being a daimyo, uh, rules over the territory within Wano called uh, Kuri. Or we're going to say this in American... Curry. This creates the general impression that each of the daimyo, the great land owners, obviously control some bit of land, and maybe each of these bits of lands are actually named. It's it's almost the impression that I get is, is kind of like a city, or in this case, like a region. And so my personal expectation or, or wants or, or ideas for what Wano could be like is, I think Wano could be like the Shaboni Archipelago of the New World. A country composed of multiple islands or segmented parts. I just personally think that it would be really cool if uh, Kuri happened to be an island and that uh, the many daimyos of Wano Kuni all have their own islands that they rule over. These islands are obviously very near each other and together the archipelago is called Wano. And it also would not surprise me if Wano was in some ways very similar to the world of Naruto, which is honestly not all that different from the real world Japan, where you have a main land surrounded by many islands, the main land being divvied up into many various segments. This is pure speculation, guys, uh, and I'm only saying this because I think that it's really cool. But um, we know that there is Raizo of the Mist, as well as uh, Shiruru of the Rain. And it's also really easy to forget Jigoro of the Wind, who was a zombie from Thriller Bark. Clearly some kind of sword wielder or samurai of the past, and the name scheme is very similar to the previous two mentioned. Uh, and that seems something that's very similar to Naruto, where you have sort of the land of fire, the land of lightning, land of earth, land of wind, etc. Raizo obviously being a ninja. So maybe Wano Kuni itself, the mainland, is divvied up into parts very similar to Naruto. The land of mist, the land of, of, of rain, maybe a land of fire. And then surrounding this mainland, you have islands, one of these islands being Kuri. And as a side note, guys, just to throw something out of left field here, uh, we know that the area that Odin ruled over is called Kuri. Um, I looked that up, and feel free to correct me if you know better than I do, but apparently that means chestnut, which reminds me a lot of Noland. And that would be such a crazy tie, because we know that Noland traversed the Grand Line. That would honestly be very mind-blowing if Oda tied that into Wano somehow. And so guys, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about, but we haven't really hit on anything like a real point to this video aside from just random discussion, so let's end with something really cool. Uh, which is, I think that a lot of people have forgotten about this, but when Wano was first teased within the story, we have these silhouettes of what appears to be six samurai. And a lot of people at the time speculated that these six samurai would end up actually being relevant to Wano, like the six most powerful people from Wano. Maybe something like the Great Six Swordsmen. And so looking at the story of Naruto and the various countries, there are five major countries as well as a bunch of smaller ones. The five major ones would be the, the water country, the fire country, earth, wind, and lightning. So maybe each of these silhouettes, five of them, represents the strongest samurai from each of these major territories. And the sixth one is the shogun or the shogun's strongest supporting. But yeah, guys, I'll go ahead and leave it off here. As always, curious as to what you guys thought about this video, if you can make sense of the random joining of thoughts. Like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified for my future content. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day.